In today's episode, we're headed to Japan. In Japan, one of the traditional Japanese gardens are called Chaniwa Gardens, which is known as tea gardens. The main purpose of a Japanese tea garden is to attempt to be a space that captures the natural beauties of nature. It's to inspire the visitor to meditation to prepare themselves for a tea ceremony. Now, moving on to the history of miso suri. For more than 700 years, the Japanese have been drinking miso soup every day. For the Japanese, miso is also known as food for the soul. Miso is the basis of a typical Japanese meal. Miso was mentioned in the early 927 AD as a soup ingredient for the wealthy in the 10th century. But because it was expensive, most people could only eat a small dab of miso on rice or pickled vegetables. And by the year 2000, 90% of miso used in Japan was used for soup. A rudimentary version of instant miso soup was developed by a samurai going to battle. Dry taro stems were simmered in miso, then braided into long ropes, which then the samurai wore around their waists. The samurai cut pieces of the miso simmered rope while on the battlefield and pouring boiling water over it to create an instant life sustaining ration. And now let's head back to our tranquil place. Sekanoi Minasan Rockin' Rafi Des, Konishiwa. You're watching Rockin' Rafi's international cuisine collaboration. It's where I seek out four to five YouTubers that are home cooks or chefs and basically do a collaboration. Then I set forth a four to five course meal that each one of us will deliver a particular course for that country that is chosen. And you might be wondering where I'm at. I'm right here at the Japanese Tea House and Friendship Garden, surrounded by serenity. The time has come for me to introduce my guests and the dishes that they're going to be creating today. Starting with me, the miso soup. I'm going to create an authentic miso soup and no Japanese meal can be a meal without miso soup. Then head on over to Lagal Meats where Sab will be showing us how to make sushi. And right after that, the main course. Head on over to Wine and Dine with Jeff where he will make you drool with his Oyakadon Japanese chicken and egg rice bowl. And I hope you save room for dessert because I want you to head on over to Tiny Kitchen Big Taste with Chef Fuji as he has a treat for you. A super moist, dense Japanese sponge cake called Castella. And if you still have a sweet tooth, just like I do, click on the link above and that will take you to my dessert sushi cheesecake roll. Without further ado, if you're ready, I'm ready, it's time to make some miso suri. Let's add six cups of purified water inside the saucepan. Before we add any kombu, which is dry kelp, let's go ahead and clean the kombu with a damp towel to wipe off any unclean particles. Never wash the kombu because you don't want to remove this white substance that you see. That is umami. Umami is that flavor that you're looking for by adding this kombu. Soak the kombu in water for 30 minutes or overnight, but we're going to do 30 minutes. Now that the kombu is ready to go after 30 minutes, bring it to a boil on a low medium heat. You want to extract the umami from the kombu as much as possible. Right before boiling, discard the kombu. 
You don't want to leave the combo inside because it will get slimy and leave a bitter taste. We're going to add four cups of katsuyabushi, which is dried bonito flakes. However, if you are a vegan and vegetarian, please skip this step. Do not add the bonito flakes to your kombu liquid, as bonito flakes are fish. When we add the dried bonito flakes, go ahead and let it simmer for about 30 to 60 seconds and turn off the heat and let it steam for 10 minutes. Using a mesh strainer, strain your kombu liquid into a bowl and you can store this in the fridge for up to 5 days. With a sharp knife, let's chop up some fresh green onions into small pieces. Now take your firm organic tofu and cut it up into small bite-sized cubes. Pour the kombu liquid back into the pot and turn on the heat to low. Add the cubed tofu to this liquid base. And now we're ready to add a total of three tablespoons of dashi. By introducing one tablespoon at a time by pressing the soybean paste against the miso strainer while inside the liquid. Take your dry wakame seaweed and add it to 1 to 2 tablespoons of hot H2O and let it sit for a few minutes. Now it's time to add the miso to our bowl. And let's dress it up by adding your desired amount of seaweed and top it off with some green onions. And here we are, the authentic Japanese miso soup made in the comfort of your own home. And let me tell you, when I was preparing this and I added the miso, the entire house smelled like I was at a Japanese restaurant. It smelled so good, yes. But what are we waiting for? I can't wait to dive into this one. So let's get a bite. This is as authentic as I've ever seen it be at any Japanese restaurant. This is gonna be really good. Looking forward to biting this one. Oshi. Oshi. This is so good. This tastes better than any sushi bar I've went to or any Japanese restaurant I've went to. This is really Oshi. This really hit the spot. It's really good. Make this at home in a matter of no time. Well, that just wraps up today's episode of this authentic miso soup. And don't forget to head out to the other channels as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The link is right down below for each one of their dishes that they made for today's collaboration. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me hear your thoughts on this miso soup share with your friends and family and that bell click on that bell so that you are notified when my next videos upload and until next time signing off